and welcome to this installment of Laura Bits, Bites, and Business series of videos. I'm Katie Coonan, Senior Technical Journalist with Semtech, and I'm here with Sri Durba, Director of Product Management in Semtech's Wireless and Sensing Products Division. Today, Sri is going to answer some frequently answered questions about, Laura Edge, about the LoRa Edge platform and its geolocation capabilities. Sri, let's begin by talking about the components of the LoRa Edge platform. Can you tell us what they are? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Katie. Uh, thanks for uh, setting up this um, meeting. So LoRa Edge was launched last year, and it's a platform that comprises hardware, software, and cloud services components. So the hardware comes in the form of the LR1110 uh, LoRa transceiver that also integrates a GNSS uh, sniffer, a Wi-Fi passive scanner, and together they form a geolocation uh, solution specifically for asset management, asset tracking, and other IoT applications. The software uh, is a um, modem stack that's embedded inside of the LR1110 uh, device, and it's um, uh, onboard memory. And it provides basic modem functions as well as APIs to the cloud services. And the third component, uh, naturally, is the cloud services uh, piece. And we offer a geolocation solver, uh, which we offer through the G what we call the GLS, um, geolocation service, as well as uh, device and application management services uh, through the LoRa cloud. Uh, in addition, we also have our own joint service that allows you to sign on to other uh, LoRa network services, uh, LoRa WAN network services. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. Okay, terrific. When it comes to LoRa Basics Modem E, what regions does that cover? Yeah, so the LoRa Basics Modem E currently covers uh, the North America frequency, the 915 megahertz frequency, as well as the European frequencies, the 868 megahertz. But in addition, uh, in May, we launched support for several other regions, including Australia, both the AS923, uh, the sub-regions as well, one, two, three, um, Australia, uh, 915 megahertz, um, and um, the Indian um, frequency uh, support is available, uh, which is the 865 megahertz. Uh, the Russian frequency is supported, 868 megahertz, um, as well as Southeast Asia. Uh, those regions under the AS923 are supported as well. Uh, Japan, Korea, they're all supported uh, from a lower WAN certification um, point of view. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Can you tell us where and how geolocation is calculated? Yeah, absolutely. So the unique thing about the Lower Edge platform is uh, the geolocation solver, which uh, essentially triangulates the position of the satellite vehicles, is not on the device. It's actually in the cloud, which is where most of the downstream applications need the lat long coordinates. So it made sense for us to um, put it in the cloud, uh, thereby saving an order of magnitude of power consumption uh, from the device, as well as um, reduce the latency uh, for uh, when the, the lat long coordinates will be available. Um, so the solver is in the cloud and uh, the way it computes the geolocation is by uh, getting the uh, satellite uh, positions uh, on the device, constructing a navigation message, transmitting it to the cloud and uh, the computation is done in the cloud by our solver, and the raw data is made available to the downstream applications to uh, eventually uh, put out uh, either a dot on the map or and, uh, or uh, a lat long coordinate. Okay, great. How accurate are the GNS and Wi-Fi location solutions? They're fairly accurate. Um, we have... Uh, with the GNSS solver, uh, we were able to get to the 10 to 20 meter range uh, outdoors. Uh, with uh, We also have a Wi-Fi scanner, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we uh, subscribe to a commercial database uh, and we are able to scan up to six MAC addresses. And it could be indoors, uh, which is typically where Wi-Fi uh, coverage is uh, optimal but also Wi-Fi has enough range that it would reach outside of buildings or warehouses. 
And uh, so even near indoors or outdoors, you could use Wi-Fi for geolocation. And with Wi-Fi, we're able to uh, get to five meter level of accuracy. Okay, cool. Now, can you, is it possible to change from GNS to Wi-Fi on the fly, whether you're indoors or outdoors? Yeah, one of the cool things that we did with uh, Laura Edge uh, is uh, the algorithm is able to determine uh, based on the number of satellite vehicles that the GNSS uh, receiver is able to see at any given point uh, and determine whether it's indoors or outdoors, right? So if it's outdoors, um, we have a certain number of satellite vehicles, uh, six or eight that we would, or more, right, that we would want to uh, see. And if we are not seeing as many, uh, then we know that we are being blocked and therefore we determine that we are indoors and then we switch over to Wi-Fi, which okay. has better coverage. So is that automatic? That's automatic. Okay, And perfect. that's very cool, um, you know, for uh, applications that wanna use Wi-Fi instead of GNSS. And, you know, that, that's how you're able to kind of tell that you're indoors versus outdoors. Okay. Now, finally, what LoRaWAN network servers are supported? Yeah, so um, we built this end-to-end -end platform by uh, pre-integrating with Actilities, a LoRa network service, and Tago IO, uh, which is a dashboarding uh, data analytics platform. Uh, but you know, over time, it's been a few months since we launched. Uh, we've obviously not sat still, right? We have uh, been working on. Uh, integrating with other LNSs as well. Um, so <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, we have a joint service that we offer, and that's the first step to onboarding any new LoRa network service, right? So any LoRa network service can be used with um, LR1110 using our keys, um, but uh, there are uh, some commercial services that we have pre-integrated with, like TTN, both version two and version three, uh, Actility, um, Senate, uh, Loriot, uh, or Loriot, uh, Orbiwise, uh, Cineverse, they're all um, pre-integrated uh, for joint service, but uh, for commercial joint service, right? Uh, but for our demo or POC purposes, we have pre-integrated with a Semtech instance of ChirpStack, so that's available. Um, in addition, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the basic geolocation service as well as the device and application uh, services, right? So that's the value added service. So for those um, using the node red application code, um, we can um, support any application service uh, to integrate with uh, Laura Cloud. That again is for uh, demo purposes. For commercial purposes, Tago.io, um, um, uh, LNS integrations to both Senate, Actility, and EveryNet are available um, with the Chirp Stack uh, instance, uh, the Semtech Chirp Stack instance. Uh, the LNS and application server um, service uh, are uh, available for demo and POC, uh, as I mentioned earlier, also for device and application services. Um, and uh, Helium is supported uh, as well, but it's more popular in commercial and uh, consumer uh, use cases more than uh, commercial uh, use cases, right? But we, we are continuing to add more support. Uh, there will be uh, future integrations with popular hosted LNSs uh, that are much larger uh, in scale um, than what I've already mentioned, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Sri. This has been very informative. I appreciate you taking the time to answer these questions. Thank and you very much. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. I hope to have you again. For sure. Thank you. And thanks to you all for watching. For more information on developing and deploying LoRa solutions, make sure to check out the other videos in this series.